Hello, welcome to Jake Wilson, George Holmes and Curtis Tipwelly's podcast. Today we are going to be discussing all the information we have gathered for a Schlaster genre overview podcast. We've all gathered lots of information and compared this information as a group. I will be talking to you today about the general editing and Slasher stalking scenes. I have looked at Slasher film openings. Whilst doing this, I tried to look at key conventions that were used and any similarities between any of the films to see if there was a pattern. Firstly, I noticed that Halloween, directed by John Carter in 1978, and The Last House on the Left, directed by Wes Craven in 1972, both started with establishing shots, and so does Psycho, directed by Alfred Hitchcock in 1960. However, Psycho provides an exposition of the time and date and setting, unlike the other films. These films were all made before 1980. Therefore, I began to look at more recent films, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, directed by Marcus Nipsel in 2003, and Scream, directed by Wes Craven in 2011. The opening of these two films start with images from a crime scene, and the film begins introducing the characters. As for Scream 4, the opening starts with the girl answering the phone. Unlike the films made before 1980, the recent films have developed more. However, the conventions in slasher films remain the same, such as When a Stranger Calls, directed by Fred Walton in 1979. This has a final girl, as does Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Also, the films I have mentioned, some of them have the notation of exposition when showing the titles by using a sans serif font. The title designers do this to make it look realistic and to scare the audience. In addition to this, unlike many other films in slasher genre, especially in the older films, the budget is severely low and their gross can be exceedingly high, so the slasher section in the film industry does not lack funds. Hello, today I will be talking to you about the general editing and slasher stalking scenes. I will go through all the different things you seem to find in each slasher stalking scene. First is quick pace editing. The father of all slasher stalking scenes is Psycho. This stalking scene is iconic as it is you um, quick paced editing to make it look realistic and scary without the uses of special effects we have now. I also looked at quick pace editing in the film Hell Night. This is quick pace editing when the victim is grabbed to create a sense of panic hiding everything away from the viewer so there is a sense of anticipation of what's going to happen. Quick pace editing is a key part of almost all slasher stalking scenes. Psycho's shower scene is very iconic for its high intensity music also which creates a sense of panic, gets you on the edge of your seat. If horror films didn't have non-diegetic music most of them wouldn't be scary even if not doing it consciously. The music is getting you scared and anticipated for what's going to happen next. Close-ups they use to show the character's emotion, like being scared or anticipation. When when, um, Psycho in the shower scene, the girl's face is really scared, and um, in Halloween, it's the same when she's getting stabbed. It's also, she's also very scared, and it's a close-up. The narrative enigma is used in basically all of the slasher opening films, Halloween, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, um, just most of the slasher films to just hide the character, so you don't know who's a villain or what he looks like and it kind of makes you a bit nervous, a bit scared of what he's going to look like. It's a bit Hello! Um, narrative enigma is used not to show the villain, this builds up anticipation and makes you scared of what the character may look like. So you're on the edge of your seat, not knowing what he what he's about, what what murder weapon he's going to use, and you don't see his face. Very rarely see his face in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, in Psycho, in Scream, in Last House on the Left. They all you don't see the face of the um, villain until later on in the film. Sometimes you don't even see the face of the villain. So that is used in stalking scenes a lot, where you don't show the person who's um, killing or stalking. You just show the feet or the back of them, never the face. Low angled shots are used for dominance to show that someone is um, someone is you're quite vulnerable. You don't know you don't know what's going to happen. You're kind of um, you're the weakened character, 
and this this makes the viewer quite scared of it makes him scared and you um you feel kind of vulnerable and everything so that that builds up anticipation also they also use location to make things scary because if you did it in a in a rainbow land or something it won't be very scary but if you do it in the dark woods then it makes it a lot scary which happens on hell night that's in the woods and um last house on the left things like that it's uh, it's dark it's it's just scary and there's it's just different in the texas chainsaw massacre and um, it starts with disequilibrium which goes against todorov's theory as he said slasher films start with equilibrium then end with then then go on to disequilibrium this is what we are wanting to do with our film so it fits in well with what we are doing because we want to um, start with uh, disequilibrium and a sense of panic and then go into equilibrium where it's okay. Films like Psycho, Scream and Halloween all start with equilibrium and most of the slasher films do. Also in Scream, Halloween and Psycho I found that the um, final girl is shown in the opening. She's usually blonde, busty and um, she's not a virgin which happens in a lot of the films. In the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the film starts by giving the audience a sense of realism, even though it might not be fully correct. Um, it, still leads, it still leads the audience on to believe that it is, it is scary and it's real and um, that it could happen to you, that kind of thing. It gets you on the edge of your seat. If I saw it, I'd be scared. It's making you believe that the film is true and based on a true story. Also, the um, final girl is usually a brunette and very intelligent and is a virgin. And this is seen in Psycho, Scream, a lot of the horror films. Um, and yeah, that is me. Over now. Ten minutes later. In all Sasha opening scenes, you get the typical elements to the film's title and items. This can include several things, which include diegetic and non-diegetic music to accompany them. They always usually include non-diegetic sound to create tension and a scary atmosphere for the audience. This builds up the opening straight away for suspense or on the edge of your seat feeling. The opening music usually is either a high pitch or a tense, disturbing long noise. Sasha films also have diegetic sound to signify to the audience what is happening in the film or give hints towards something which is going on. For example, here is a scraping metallic sound which links into the type of weapon of which the title Sasha genre gets its name. Usually the shots used are an established shot or an extreme one shot. This is to give the audience exposition of the film. For example, the scenery can slightly signify what's going on. With the items, they usually are at the beginning of a film and include their own logo, accompanied by non-diegetic sound. They are not longer than 15 seconds usually, depending on the budget of the film or how many producers there are, the more the items the film will have. Sometimes the film have adapted items to the film, which match the film genre. For example, Warner Bros. item in Harry Potter was changed to suit the film with the dark effect added with the colours and the sound from Harry Potter. Most slashes tend to be franchises. To mention a few, there's Halloween, which made 60 million worldwide, Friday the 13th, making 40 million, Nightmare on Elm Street, which made 25.5 million, Leprechaun, which made 8.6 million, Scream, which made 161 million, Scary Movie, 278 million, Saw, and Saw, which made 103 million. I like my 